developing color on there, you can smell the aroma change. For this, you can, this is kind of a personal choice. You can go light, you want to do a lighter color phrase, you can do, and you'll get more like candy, uh, sugar-like notes, or you can go nice and heavy. You want to do like a deeper, more caramel notes. It's all about what you like. The idea is though, you want to control it and be intentional. Don't be like, Oops, it's kind of caramel. Like, be on, be on purpose. Live on purpose. Okay? So, we get some nice color on there. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time getting color on here because I'm demoing. But, again, do go for a nice color. This morning, one group, they had it on 10. And I'm on, like, 7 or 8. Somewhere in there. And uh, they got too much color too fast, and it wasn't nice and round. It was like got too dark and it was spotty. So watch your temperature, low to high. Okay. Now, once you get enough color, you're gonna stay at this eight or nine somewhere in there. And now I'm gonna flip it. I'm not. Remember how I was saute? We we were high uh, with the uh, temperature. Then we got the right color. Then we lowered the temperature. Cook it halfway. Brought the temperature back up. Flipped it. Got color, then lowered it again to halfway. That's a full um, technique. That's called saute. Th what we're doing here is a method within a technique. This is called searing. And se you can't just serve something that's seared because, by definition, it's not fully cooked. It's a, it's a method within a full technique. The technique is braising. It's a method within there. So when you see seared salmon on the menu, for people who know how to cook, they go, because uh, you don't serve seared salmon. Not, it sounds nice, but it's not accurate. You would serve sauteed salmon. Is that the technique? Okay, so we got the nice color on there. We're going to flip now. Without the like. What's that? When you hear like seared tuna. No, that's not, it's not appropriate. If, you if, if it's finished, it's finished. That means it's sauteed. Well, but isn't seared tuna sometimes they literally just like put it on, take it off? Is it, is it done? Is it fully cooked? Isn't it not the point that it's fully cooked? But, are, but I'm, is it fully cooked? Are you done cooking it? It's not fully Are you done cooking it? It's not fully cooked. Though. It's it's not are you done though. cooking it? Though? Are you done cooking it? Oh, what's, no, what's like sushi shishimi? You understand what I'm saying? I get it, but it's different. No, I know what you're saying. Like their intent isn't to cook it that yeah. much, but it's still not. But are you done cooking it? Are you cooking it further? Yeah. And then it's, <laughs> you are. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. It's Th like there's a difference between whether or not your intention is to cook it and whether or not you actually cook it. If you're cooking it to a certain point, you can cook it rare. Yeah. Right? Not done. So if you're we... done, you're done. If you're no longer cooking something, you're done cooking it. Therefore, it's not a sear. It's a saute. By classical French definition. And that's where that's where a lot of chefs get heated. It. It's, it's annoying when you get people who don't know how to cook and aren't trained classes to do that. But I just want to make sure you understand my point. I do. Okay. Because if you're not cooking it any further, you're done. You want to keep trying. What's that? Yeah. Kyle does it. It's wrong. It's incorrect. <laughs> they call it seared tuna. Okay. Do you think you take out oil? You'll notice that as you go. Because you'll otherwise get a lot of oil. Coming out. Not a lot of that chicken fat now and then. Okay, so now we're gonna I'm gonna stop here because I don't want to take any more time, but you can see the cut you can develop more color on there if you want. Watch your color on the splatter. Did you flip it at all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did I miss that? Over here. Over here. Over here. No, I was over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. I was taking notes. No, yeah. You're still on the sear thing. <laughs> oh, I literally wrote sear. <laughs> but I spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When did he? <laughs> okay. I got skin side down. Seven or eight. You need to earn more money so you can pay attention. All right. Next. What do you smell right now? Now we're going to build 
on mirepoix base, I'm only using carrots and uh, onion because that's all I got. I don't have celery, that's fine. But now I want you to watch the smell of your here. Okay, so onion, a little carrot. Developing aromas. Did you put the chicken back in there or notice? Notice. Okay, make sure you're high enough on here. If it's not like a rock and roll, turn it up. Okay? We're not going for Barry Manilow. It's more like AC. Okay? Then once that you get that nice brown in there, you're gonna add a little piece of bay leaf about that big. And then a little bit of rosemary. This is from our garden outside. And I want you to notice the smells after we activate the oil from this. Did you get it? Can you smell it? I'm going to make a pillow uh, spritzer like this. So when you, when you go to bed at night, you spray that on your pillow. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, spray, spray. Ah, and sleep in their block. Okay, so now we've got all the oils activated in there. We're going to put the chicken back on top. Back on top. Looks like that. And here, some people add a little bit of, you could do white wine in there, red wine, cook it down, and then add stock afterwards. I've done it with beer. I've done, a, I, I used coffee beans in here, like whole coffee espresso beans in there to, with the mirepoix. And then I used stout beer, and then grazed uh, short ribs like that. Really tasty. So now I'm gonna add this, the liquid. You're gonna use beef stock because that's what we have. <laughs> Um, and you're going to pour this in until it goes half, the liquid level is halfway up the chicken. About one and a half cups. Then you're going to put in a little bit of salt. Why? More faster. More faster. Turn up the volume. Very nice. And then a little bit of pepper because masochist. you're masochist. Very good. Well, that's that's, that's, not, that's just unrelated. <laughs> Thanks for sharing them. I What's like that? Yeah, I'm, he, uh, good good she observation. I'm putting it in the liquid, not on the chicken. Okay? <laughs> you had two bags of oil Because I wanted to those oils from the pepper and the, the salt to go in the liquid. Anytime you're cooking something that's going to absorb the liquid, you want the liquid to be seasoned. Okay. Then once you're here, put it on like 20 bring it up really fast in temperature, and then you're probably going to put it down to like a two. You want, you want to bring up the temperature real quick to get it going, moving, and then this is what you want, this kind of movement. Tickle a tarantula, okay? Boiling would not be advisable on any level. So you want to bring it down there. This would be, if you want to do this, uh, as an exceed standards, like if you're already like struggling in this class and you want to like get a little something, then you would use a cartouche. And you, this would be an excellent application for a cartouche. And then you put your lid on there. Because Nick didn't get me one, so I don't have one that fits, but I'm going to use the one that fits. Okay. So use the one that fits. But you a uh, lid on there, 30 minutes. Let it go. When you are, um, thank you, Nick. Awesome. Nick to the rescue. If you see little <coughs> puffs of smoke coming out, that's good. Okay. If it's whistling like a teapot, 
not good. If there's nothing coming out, peek, see what it's doing. If it's not moving, turn it up one. If it's going too fast, turn it down. Keep it in the two, three range, somewhere in there. It seems to be good on it. And again, you're not look, cooking by the number. You're cooking with your eyes, so look at it. This is fine, see how it's moving? Smell that. It's a simmer. Uh, well, poached simmer, 180, 170, 185, somewhere in there. So, not yeah, not nowhere above a uh, simmer. You really don't want it moving too much. <coughs> Jeremy, actually come up here and I'll show you why. I just want all you guys around me on the side. This hit me the other day. I, had, I made the mistake of thinking, <laughs> and I was like, uh, gosh, how can I better have an example of how to cook proteins? And so I came up with this. So this is a protein. Hold on to a tape. Okay. So this is a protein fiber. And when we cook it, you're going to twist that way, and I'm going to twist that way, gently. Okay. So this is cooking, cooking, cooking. Stop. So this is a protein that's that's um, cooked, right? And it's nice, and juicy, and loose, and, ju and nice, really unctuous. And then that's cooking it properly. But if you cook it too hot, like if you boil this, or you cook it with like an egg, scrambled egg in a really hot pan, it's gonna over coagulate your proteins, and this is what happens. Now it's our Okay. So that was my visual of why we don't want to cook protein. Now feel it. Feel the feel the protein. Tight. Okay. So that's my kind of new visual and dry. So hopefully that visual helps you understand how to cook proteins. In French they call them a point or to the point of perfection. Where they're they're coagulated, but they're just loose and ready to be eaten. You wouldn't want to eat this towel. Does that help make sense? That